she was about to destroy the Terminator. And her son said, no, wait a minute. You can't do that. There's not much time left in the world. Well, it was intense, but um, certainly it was a braver choice than, than I expected. Smile once in a while. Smile? That's a good scene, because I'm asking him questions. Smile. We both learn off each other. I thought that that stuff was cool because that means if he can't control what he's what's happening to it, then he's starting to lose it. Now, there are a lot of little scenes that are good. It's the same cast, the same writer, the same director, but it turned out to be slightly less necessary than the pieces on either side of it in the, in the final cut of the movie. But certainly there might be a group of people who would be very interested in seeing the longer version, the special edition. Terminator 2, more than meets the eye. In Terminator 2, Judgment Day, Sarah Connor joined forces with the Terminator to protect her son John from the deadly T-1000. Together, they tried to alter the path of history for the survival of mankind. In creating a compelling world where man and machine are both ally and enemy, writer-director James Cameron had to create characters whose lives extended far beyond the confines of the screen. The process of writing a good script is, is the process of creating uh, characters that have complete lives, that have complete pasts, and that uh, everything that they do within the, the confines of a two-hour piece is determined by everything that went before that. It's the art of setting up those characters as quickly but as completely as possible. So I tend to leave it a little fuller than it needs to be in the final cut. The scenes that are written can work beautifully in the written word or as even reading a script and go this is neat this is neat oh this is fun and then you realize if you translate all of that to film you're going to possibly lose when it comes to pace there were great scenes but that had to go because the movie had to be cut down to around two hours and 15 minutes or so and it's it's often difficult to predict before the fact exactly what piece of information will be necessary or how many times a given character trait has to be reiterated for it to be powerful within a film. One such scene was an eerie moment with the T-1000 in John Connor's home. The T-1000 searching John's room is a classic case of underestimating the audience. I wasn't sure that people would get the idea that what he touched, what he had physical contact with, he could sample molecularly, but I wanted to really get that concept across. And in that scene, you see it very clearly. He touches everything in the room. He's searching for some clue, and his hand goes across the poster. And he knows the box is in there without seeing it. I had this whole theory that if he's going to search, and he's so sense aware that he doesn't rip through and tear things up, he goes in and tries not to disturb things, but just tries to find his information. His fingertips could do a lot of reading for him. It's sort of like reading Braille. But ultimately, you see the whole film cut together and you say, I don't need that. I get it. I get it already. 